Five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Sopko, thank you for your work and for being here today. Uh, since the war in Afghanistan began in 2001, and again, it's the longest war in U.S. history, the United States has spent nearly $800 billion, I think you mentioned $780 billion was your figure, on the war, including over $100 billion appropriated for reconstruction activities. In 2017, our, our colleague and my good friend, the late Rep. Walter Jones, requested information from CIGAR about the total amount of waste, fraud, and abuse CIGAR has uncovered. CIGAR identified up to $15.5 billion in waste, fraud, and abuse and failed whole-of-government reconstruction efforts, 29 percent of the $52.7 billion in spending it reviewed. How much money is still being lost to waste, fraud, and abuse and failed whole-of-government reconstruction efforts? Well, uh, as you know, it took us a while to do that study for the members who requested it, and uh, it's very difficult. Uh, I, I can't give you that number. Uh, and uh, It's billions. Um, just recently, I, I was told that uh, by a senior U.S. government military official that over 50 percent of the fuel we are buying for the Afghans never reaches its intended purpose. Wow. Now, we're talking billions. Yes, so, but I haven't documented. As you know from that report, we were very careful in documenting based upon what we have actually looked at, and that's where we came up with that number. So it's your impression that it's billions on an ongoing basis? It yes. continues to be annually yes. billions of dollars. Yes. Wow. Uh, according to the Department of Defense, uh, corruption in Afghanistan remains the top strategic threat to the leg legitimacy and success of the Afghan government. And your office has stated that, quote, failure to effectively address systemic corruption means U.S. reconstruction programs at best will continue, continue to be subverted and at worst will fail, end quote. What role does corruption play in the failure of U.S. reconstruction efforts in Afghanistan? The most obvious is that money we're directing toward it gets diverted to somebody's pocket and it buys property in Dubai or Northern Virginia. Uh, but the more sinister part is that a corrupt official is identified with us and in the eyes of the Afghans, we're viewed as evil and as bad as he is or she is. And you may wonder why is the Taliban over all these years able to survive? In part is it's feeding on this frustration and lack of support for the Afghan government because they see these corrupt officials, corrupt military, et cetera. So that's the two-edged sword or the prongs of the, the problem of corruption. And what steps are the U.S., its coalition partners, and the Afghan government currently taking to eradicate the culture of corruption? Well, the Afghan government promised at Brussels to establish an anti-corruption strategy and to implement it. Uh, Congress has asked us to look at that. It was in the last three appropriations bills. Uh, we looked at it and said, well, they, they issued a good policy has some problems, but now uh, they hadn't have, it was late, so they haven't really implemented it. So this year, on behalf of yourselves in Congress, it was in the appropriations bill, we're looking at its implementation. And I can't tell you the results yet because we're not done, but it's mixed, to say the least. And uh, given the issues with corruption, should the U.S. continue to make additional reconstruction investments? Should they? Yeah. Well, that's, that's a policy call, and mm -hmm. Congress said I'm going to have to beg off on that. If you decide it's important to be there, if you decide it's important to rebuild Afghanistan for the stated goal to keep the terrorists out or keep them at bay, then you've got to give reconstruction money. As I told you before, without us funding Afghan government, it will cease to exist. Thank you. I'll yield back. Thank the gentleman, and I, I appreciate his warm remarks regarding uh, Walter Jones, who did some wonderful work on, on this committee, was a dear friend to many of us. Uh, the chair now recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. Ruta, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sopko, for joining us today in your testimony. Uh, 
my line of questioning will be similar